Thanks, Lunar Spell 27 here, bringing you my life reaction and review on Toriko chapter 338. Yep, it's Toriko time yet again, and the title is called Joa vs. Midora. So, well, we now know what we're going to be focusing on in this week's chapter. So, Joa vs. Midora. Who's gonna win? Who's gonna lose? And who's gonna die? Maybe no one's gonna die. I don't know, but uh, let's find out. Okay, um, surprising start at the beginning. We're just going to um, Naki Master Chiro, seeing the creature uh, thing. All right, well, I guess we'll see like how they're gonna destroy this creature. Hmm. It seems that Chi Chi recognized the creature, I think. I'm not exactly sure. Oh! What the hell? The thing just ate Jiro? Did, what? Oh. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> I thought it, I thought the creature ate him for me there, but no, all he did was just get his uh, jacket. Yeah, Jiro just like bent in his back to touch it, and the thing is really fast, so yeah. Thank God Jiro's faster. <laughs> He's gonna attempt to use knocking, but it's not working. A creature that you can use knocking on? That's kind of strange. Jira realized this in an instant. It's like the rotation of a giant planet. The resistance is a furious energy. That's a real bitch to stop. <laughs> Dude! Jiro! You use fucking knocking on an entire planet! This should be no problem! Not since one of the Eight Kings, I think. So, he never had a problem like this since he encountered one of the Eight King Beasts? Okay. I wonder which one he encountered. He established a provisional estimate of his opponent's physical strength, and the resurrected thing sensed the danger of the creature in front of it. Oh, And it changed its form. Okay, so it went from a mutated ugly-ass frog to a... blob thing with eyes and tentacles. Okay. And... <laughs> <laughs> and a freaking Jiro just buffs up. He's like powering up for like a huge attack or something. Okay, and his arm, his right arm just not only elongated, it stretched out and it turned dark. Like, does he know how to use third gear? Or, uh, that's what it's called. That's what the thing Luffy does, right? <laughs> I don't know what is going on. Don't hit the world with it, Jiro-chan. Why? What's gonna happen if he does hit the earth? Big bang. That's what that's what he's doing? Big bang? Okay, what does that do? Oh, come on. Ah, no! No, okay, now we're back with Midori, but I wanted to see what the hell this big bang thing is. I wanted to see him destroy the, the, the great, ah, oh, fuck. Okay, Joa versus Midori now. Uh, I, I mean, I know we're gonna go back to that, but I'm gonna see what the thing is over here! Mm. Alright, fine, whatever, okay. Uh, that form that so resembles his mother from long ago. 0 0.01 second. That is the amount of time Midor froze from seeing Joe's appearance. It's usually not a big deal, but this is Toriko, so that must be a really, really, really big deal. It was a slight trembling of emotion far off from what you could call being emotionally shaken. That moment that could by no means be called an opening. Joa took advantage of and attacked. What? Seriously? It's a hundredth of a second! Like, how fast is Joa? Seriously, what the hell? What, what did Joa even do? I don't... This series is weird sometimes, I swear. <laughs> the memories of the gourmet cells have told us something. Long ago, among gourmet ingredients, there once existed a prey that showed only a 0.01 second opening every one million years. And there's this creature thing that looks like a beetle with branches or plants? I don't know. That can't be Midora's gourmet cell demon. I mean, we've seen what it looked like and it looks nothing like this. And there's another creature, which I'm assuming that's supposed to be Joe's Gourmet Soul Demon? It looks like it, I'm not sure. 
One would do nothing but wait looking for that opening. That instance that a human brain cannot even comprehend. That would have an extraordinary capture level that you people of the IGO could not even measure, yes? By the way, Midora, do you perhaps recognize my face? Oh sure, rub it in, why don't you? That mistake at the moment we faced each other was a fatal one, I'd say. <laughs> and it's nothing! It did nothing on him! Like, what the hell? No, I had the wrong person. What the hell? Like, how does it not work? Maybe it's my Nori world or something, I'm not sure. And, okay, uh, a couple of the life balls, uh, broke. I guess this is Midora's doing? What the hell did he even do? The period in which you were attacking the full 0 0.01 seconds, you left yourself completely open. I was able to take my time to launch a counterattack. What? Seriously? Like, how? Like, what kind of counterattack? Like, what did he do? Was it Hungry Space? Minority World? Seriously, what did he do? I don't. Is this how this fight's gonna be? <laughs> what the hell? I see. Those orbs were able to take your place, were they? Yeah, they're life orbs. To be precise, these life orbs contain food spirits which act as the substitutes. And he destroyed eight of them in one attack. But the life orbs have food spirits inside them, so they're basically using spirits. They're using the dead as human shields, as scapegoats, so that they would survive. That's pretty messed up. And Joe is a gourmet cell demon is, uh, is nearly unleashed. I mean, it's only covering like half of his face, but um, Joe is telling him to calm down. It would be troubling if this man went wild here and now. Yeah, you do not want Midor to go wild. Froze's reincarnation is Joa, which is you, correct? Yes, the one revived by Cassius full course and the Order of Center was me. So Joa is Froze's reincarnation because of Akasi's full course and center, but we would never seen Froze eat the full course menu, let alone the hors d'oeuvre. I mean, we've only seen Midora pour the cure water on the grave. So does that mean that the cure water really is center? Or is one of the ingredients of center, like part of it? I don't know. Okay, there's um, Froze's grave and yeah, there was something protruding at it at the end of the Midora flashback. We never got to see, like, what it was, so... Okay, a hand burst out, and there's Froze! Or Joa, and, um... I think Joa was naked. Huh. Well, it's, it's hard to tell, but uh, Joa definitely looks like a guy in this one. I mean, this is supposed to be Froze's body, so... You know what, I'm just gonna move on. This is weird as it is. <laughs> Acacia's hors d'oeuvre center made cure water well up to the ground surface. Oh! Okay. So, cure water isn't technically really the hors d'oeuvre. The cure water is just the cause of center. In a way, at least that's what the translation is saying. So why is it that you, not Froze, received Froze's body and was revived into this world? Froze's soul, Froze herself, refused to be revived. Froze feared that thing that lurked inside Acacia. She must be referring to Acacia's gourmet cell demon, maybe. It would seem that in the end, she would not approve of Acacia's goal. Acacia gave up on Froze and drew in my soul. Oh, so that is Joa. So Joa is just using Froze's body. It's not really Froze herself. Okay, that makes sense. Okay, so Midora, the whole reason why he's at Neo headquarters is to go to Acacia and ask him what his goal is. Akasi's goal is absurdly simple, to eat, okay? We just want to discover yet unseen tastes by perusing the gourmet cell's memories. We want to follow the cell's memories and reach the place those cells seek. The farthest land. The far Wait, that's, that's what Akasi has said in the Midor flashback, going to the farthest land, but I thought... The kitchen, the location of that kitchen was the farthest land, I guess not. There's a panel of outer space, oh my god. We're really gonna go to outer space, aren't we? The farthest land is space. 
That's what the third act is gonna be. Outer space. Oh man. Toriko is space. Jesus fucking Christ. <laughs> To eat right after most butterfly larvae hatch, they start to eat the eggshell they had been in. That is because it is their first food memory, which is etched into their DNA. Memories also tell them what to eat next, as well as where to go to eat it. What stimulates them is their memories, which are appetite energy. That appetite is the ultimate energy which dwells within gourmet cells. 13.7 billion years ago, one of the particles created with the birth of the universe was gourmet energy. So, while the universe was created, a particle created gourmet energy. That enormous explosion, also called the Gourmet Big Bang, was the birth of appetite. Where's a Gourmet Big Bang? Seriously? Okay. As the energy grew, before long it became the foundation for gourmet cells. Oh, so that's how gourmet cells were created originally, okay. The foundation eventually became gourmet cells which have told us their memories of forgotten foods and tastes from an immeasurably long time in the past. The appetite energy continues to grow even now. It is a power that cannot be stopped. That power itself is the answer, the forever unchanging truth. Jesus Christ, this is a lot of information to take in, like... I thought we were getting a fight, but instead we're actually getting some answers and information in the process, so... That's a good thing, but the title is so misleading. No emotions, they are not needed. All there is, is appetite. Understand, this world is nothing beyond. If you're hungry, then eat. It is only humans which cause other things. You cannot let your emotions take control of you. Like that foolish woman that held Acacia back, Midora. Oh, you should not have called Rose a foolish woman right in front of Midora. You're gonna piss them off. <laughs> Okay, it's just Midora's like stoic face, but I don't know. Yeah, you can tell he's definitely angry. Eating is our goal, and it's yours too, isn't it, Midora? Oh my god, is he trying to get him to join his side? Seriously? Why don't we go together to the place our cells seek? Moving as that unshakable thing appetite di dictates. I'd venture to say that I believe that is what Froze wanted as well. Yeah, but Froze refused Acacia's goal. She didn't approve of it, which means that's not what Froze wanted. You even said that yourself, Joa. Like, come on. Don't get the wrong idea. I am not getting emotional or anything like that. However, I will say one thing. You people have long ago stepped on. And he's friggin' smiling. Oh shit, what's he gonna do? Tiger's tail. Oh, Fuck, he's powering up! <laughs> Tepe's like, this is bad. Um, okay, but I do have like one question. Like, what is going on with the Batoto translation? Like, I'm on this page, uh, page 18, and um, you still see the, um, I don't know if that's supposed to be like the Chinese writing or the Japanese writing, but you still see that, and yet you have the English words in the speech bubbles over the, the Chinese or Japanese writing, like, uh, what's going on, Batoto? Like, I think you're slipping a bit, but okay. Well, I still know what they're saying, at least. So yeah, Midori's powering up, and uh, Joe is summoning uh, the Tokage. Wait, hey, what's the Tokage again? Oh yeah, yeah, the the the, the shadow snake uh, thing back in the Cooking Fast arc. That's probably what he's summoning, but I don't know what he's gonna do with that. And what is Midori gonna do? Like, seriously, Meteor Spice? What?
because we didn't technically get a fight between Midoriya and Joa. It was just like one attack and then a counter attack and then Meteor Spice and that's about it. But on the plus side, we do get some answers to some questions that were left unanswered and we also get a lot of information, especially in the world of Toriko and what's hinting at could be the third act of Toriko. But um, before we get to that, let's go to the beginning. Yeah, um, I was not expecting um, at the beginning of the chapter to focus on uh, Naki Master Jiro dealing with the um, revived creature thing, but we did get that. I was scared for a minute there that Jiro did get eaten, but I'm glad that he did. I mean, Jiro's strong. He is freaking powerful, I will admit. But this thing can devour anything on the Earth, and even the Earth itself at this point. Just, just this, like, tiny little thing. Like, a piece of Acacia. Imagine, like, what's gonna happen when is fully revived and starts eating. Like, shit. Like, seriously. But... I hated the little cliffhanger that ended off when we got back to Joa and Midora because he was going to use a technique called Big Bang, which was just, you know, his like arms stretched out and black and it looked like that he was going to destroy this thing in like one hit. I don't know what the Big Bang is going to do, but whatever it is, it's supposed to be so dangerous that he shouldn't hit the earth with that. It's now been confirmed who Joa really is. He was just a spirit who is now revived in Froze's body. Acacia did try to revive Froze, but Froze didn't approve of his goal, his plan, and she even was afraid of uh, the thing that was living inside of Acacia, which obviously was referring to his gourmet cell demon. So maybe it's the gourmet cell demon that's going to try to devour everything. I'm not sure, but Froze is dead. She is dead. And, um,. Since Akasi couldn't convince her to join her side, he gave up on her and revived Joa in Froze's body. But here's the thing that I don't understand. Joa did say that he was revived because of Akasi's full course menu and the Order of Center. So I feel like we might have not seen something um, in the flashback scenes or maybe there was something that we might have missed or something I might have missed or maybe, maybe Akasi did attempt to revive Froze with his full course menu but we didn't see it. But one thing's for sure, it's been confirmed that the Cure Water isn't technically the order but it was created because of Center, I believe. At least that's what the translation was saying. And we know that Midora constantly poured the Cure Water onto uh, Froze's grave, so maybe that was um, the final ingredient used to revive Joa. I'm not exactly sure. I'm still a bit uh, confused in that part. But at least we now know what Acacia's goal is, and it is to eat. To discover unseen tastes out into the farthest land, referring to outer space. So, yeah, we really are going to go to outer space. That is what it's hinting at in this chapter, so... That's probably what the third act is going to be in Toriko. The farthest land, outer space. Toriko in space. I don't know, I, I don't know how I feel about that. I mean, that sounds pretty cool, but oh my god, this is just nuts. <laughs> That's gourmet. Energy was created when the Earth Universe was created. And then, you know, there was the Gourmet Big Bang, which also created appetite and that Big Bang and the energy created the gourmet cells but it's also the place that the gourmet cells remember in their memories where these unknown ingredients resides in so that so Acacia wants to go up to the farthest land up to outer space to discover these unknown tastes but when Joa said that Froze feared the thing inside him I'm starting to think that maybe this wasn't really Acacia's goal maybe this is the goal of his gourmet cell demon I mean I know something must have happened after the Gourmet War ended or after Froze died. At least something happened to Acacia because the Blue Nitros are reviving him and he looks completely different. It could have been his Gourmet Cell Demon taking over. I'm not exactly sure, but there are still some things that we still don't know about Acacia, but at least we know what Acacia's goal is. Yeah, this chapter has a lot of information to take in. 
but at least it answers some questions and that is something I do appreciate about this chapter. Although I was kind of expecting a fight, but not really, but we might get one in next week's chapter when uh, Midora unleashes Meteor Spice. But I get the feeling that Joel might counteract with it somehow because he was summoning the Tokage to do something. I'm not exactly sure. Yeah, holy shit, this chapter. <laughs> so yeah, overall, yet again, another, another hype-filled chapter, another interesting one, that's for sure. But there is so much to take in in this chapter. You probably need a lot of time to let it sink in. But at least we get some information. At least we get some answers. And um, next week, uh, continuation of the battle, or the battle will finally begin. So what will Meteor Spice do? Will it destroy uh, the headquarters of Neo? Will it destroy all of Neo? Will it decimate Area 1? I don't know, but I'm looking forward to seeing what happens next week. So tell me guys, what did you think of this week's chapter of Toriko? Did you like it? Did you hate it? What did you think of Akasia's goal and all this information that we um, got? And do you think there's a way that Joa will stop Meteor Spice? Let me know in the comments below. Be sure to like the video if you like it and subscribe to more videos. And be sure to check out my Facebook fan page and Google+. Plus. So yeah, that is Toriko chapter 338. Yeah, these chapters, these past couple weeks sure have been something. That's for sure. <laughs> I'm going to spell 27 and I'll see you guys later. Bye.